So this is something that I've um, purchased. I love this Zoom platform because I think we can we can have a meeting and dialogue without having to be physically in the same room. And I think that's really the way of the future. Um, although I do like seeing everyone's face, so I think that helps as well. Um, and so for people that will be joining, that can attend, I'll have this posted and they can just click on it and, and you know, review it later at their viewing pleasure. So again, uh, welcome to everyone to the year two uh, clinical adult health challenge uh, meeting. We will, uh, I'm just gonna go through a couple of things that will be important this semester. And for the purposes of newer people, I'm gonna go over the sort of the course itself and how that fits within the broader curriculum. And then we'll talk about some of the specifics. And please just stop me at any time. There's also the chat feature if you wanna, you know, throw up a question, I mean, just yell it out, but also you can push your questions into the chat feature as well. So this is this portion of the, the, the course is the Adult Health Challenges. It, it's in the, it, in the Adult Health Challenges thread of our program. So we have like a helix formation, and this is one of the, the, the helixes of the program. In, in year one, they take adult, um, they take older adult to help prepare them for this clinical. Then in year two, it's divided. Half will go to uh, med, med surge or adult health challenges. The other half go to um, uh, pediatrics maternity. So in year two, then in year three, they go to mental health and community. And then in year four, they are uh, doing their integrated practicum, which is a, a theory course with 192 clinical hours, and then they complete 47, uh, the final practicum with 420 hours. So this is their foundational course, it's med surge. Um, there is, it, it, the theory portion of it covers uh, the entire gamut uh, of, of, of med surge nursing. So we try to cover in the theory course the important concepts. And unfortunately we have it still broken down as um, biomedical type concepts. So we talk about pain, um, week two is cardiac, week three is so, uh, respiratory, week four will be, what do we do week four? We do uh, um, pre, post-op, and pre, pre interrupt and post-op care. We do neurology, endocrinology, GIGU, medical surgical emergencies. And so those are sort of the pieces that we talk about. Within the, the theoretical concepts, I also bring in um, the most common things they're gonna see. So I don't talk about everything, uh, but what are they gonna see in clinical? And what do they need to get going? Uh, mm -hmm. and, and so, uh, they, and what, we, what we learn in clinical, what we learn in, in class, um, if, if you could even just sort of bring those concepts through in clinical. So what, what was your course about today? Or what, what was your, what was your, what was your um, class on this week? And so, and I do the same thing. So what did you do in clinical? Did you, were you able to do blah, blah, blah? Or how have you been managing with this sort of thing? And so it's really good to have that dialogue so we know what's going on in clinical and that you know what's going on in the classroom. Oh, I just have an email from Jennifer to say she's joined us. Welcome, Jennifer. Thank you so much. Um, I'm hoping you can hear us. I'm taping this uh, for people that can't join us. I hope you're okay with that. And it, feel free to put on your video if you like. And feel free not to if you don't like. Anyways, I'm sure she'll put it on if she wants. Um, and so uh, I try to look at the assignments in terms of the workload of the students and what is the relevance of the work that they have to produce. So we have a, way too many assignments for the students. So for instance, too many reflections, too many submissions, etc. And so um, I'm not sure what Kathy Labus has decided. Last semester I actually had taken out about two or three of the assignments just because they were, it was way too much because they've got that for their practicum plus they have that for my clinical course so it was just burdening them and what was the importance and everything I do is from a pedagogical um, relevancy so everything I do is evidence-based and so what were they learning from that piece so I'm not sure what Kathy's decision will be and I'll, I'll check with her to see what she said about um, how many reflection hi welcome welcome thank you for joining us on short notice uh, we're just getting started, so um, you're not missing anything. 
Um, so uh, typically there's two reflections and what we have these professional practice reports. Uh, they're handed in after each clinical. And I find that that's more relevant because you can see how they're thinking, right? And if they put things together in a mishmash, then you know they're thinking that way and you can help to formulate their, their thinking. I really help them to uh, think very cohesively. So they use their worksheet and they read through the whole worksheet and they're not really thinking about what they're saying. So I really help them to put it with, into context, either an SBAR format or something as opposed to just reading off their, their, their uh, worksheets. Um, so I, did, I don't know if Kathy Davis has spoken to you at all um, in terms of how many assignments are due. I know we decided uh, last year in the fall that we would have, I think, one reflection and two PPRs, something to that effect. Now, granted, the professional practice reports are helpful for you putting together your evaluations because you can just lift your evaluations and cut and paste into that. And you might even want to start that early. Like I used to keep a little uh, handwritten uh, notebook um, when the students did something really exceptional because I, I want to give them good feedback as well. So I would say, you know, I noticed you interacting in a very therapeutic manner with uh, patient X. Uh, continue that. That was great. Um, and then so I keep a ledger that that could you could just drop that into the evaluation as you're going by. Um, so as, as you're doing it every week and I, I would give them frequent feedback and timely feedback so at the end of each clinical i would just take notes look at my notes and say oh you did a great job um with that dressing you came really prepared and i noticed that you, although it was your first dressing you did an awesome job at it so really to help them build their confidence however if they didn't do an awesome job i would say you know i noticed today that you were struggling with the dressing and i know it's all new for you so could i recommend you go back to your uh, simulation lab and they have open hours that they can come in and practice. So go and practice. And the thing is, if you ask them to go and practice, if they're not really ready and you think that they're stumbling, because there's going to be rustiness, and then there's going to be just lack of knowledge. And you'll be able to test that. If they're rusty, then you want to work with them at the bedside, great. But if they really can't do it, send them back for practice and um, have them sign in. And then what we can do is we can copy that and give you, so you can have a copy of when they signed into the IPR hours. So that you can keep track of that. So if you send them to IPR hours, you want to tell, you want to see that they've actually done it. Does that make sense? Okay. Um. So I'm not sure. Did did they? So did you find out from Kathy? Did she say anything about how many assignments are due? All Kathy had mentioned to me earlier this week was that there was talks, and that I think it's at Janet's level. Or so okay. it's at the dean. I think yeah. She said it had gone to the dean for them to decide how much the students had to do, and she was waiting to hear back. For the for for for, for this reflection. For, yeah, like the analysis. I think that's what she had mentioned. I just kind of said, oh, okay, I'll just wait. Dean? I think that's. I'm pretty sure that's what she had said because it kind of made me roll my eyes a little bit. But I was like, okay, okay I'll just wait. Sure. Uh, we we decided so last last semester. Um in putting out because we changed our format with pediatrics and maternity child that's all different this semester and so um and then when i just took out those uh, assignments it, and we had new teachers and whatnot i just took out the extra assignments that were very redundant um so then we met and we said that whatever we did last semester we had to do this semester so oh, okay. yeah because it's the same for the whole because that's what we're evaluating the students on so um, I'll find out for sure, uh, but it's not at the level of the dean. I, that's nothing that our dean would deal with. So well, I'll, that's I'll, what didn't make sense to me when she had mentioned yeah. it, so I'm not sure. Yeah. Sure. I'll find out for Tuesday, because I think, who's doing that? Je uh, Jennifer's doing that. Jennifer Goodwin. She's done it before, so she knows how it's done. Okay. Um, and so, and, and in those, in those reflections, and I'm sure Kathy mentioned it to you, it, it takes a, it, a lot of feedback from the clinical instructor. So lots of feedback. This is, you know, this is really great the way you've described it. You might want to consider blah, blah, blah. So lots of feedback. And if it's not really, um, up to the level of a year two student, then you can have the right to say, you know what, I think you need to, uh, take this away 
think about it and I think that you need to include and get them really direct feedback. Please, uh, you know, add in more around your analysis piece. Go to the literature and look at the analysis. You needed to look at a uh, theoretical framework from Benner. You needed to go and um, add some more around the practice concepts. You need to go to the RNAO website and really drill down and get some of that data, that their literature so that you can support your efforts. So don't hesitate. That that's absolutely that's absolutely fine. Um, and so that's kind of the assignments. But I, again, and the learning plan. We're moving to a new learning plan format uh, next year. So this year, it's the same as it was last in the fall. And the learning plan is based on three goals. Uh, one is around health assessment, health promotion. And I forget the third one off the top of my head. Um, but again, it's the students' learning plans, but they have to identify what strategies they would use to meet their learning needs. So again, a lot, most times those learning plans have to go back to them with some good feedback. Um, you know, you need to consider this is really not a measurable goal. So they need to use SMART goals. We talk about SMART goals. And um, they need to have the SMART goals uh, in their learning plan so that they can be measurable. Um, the, the, the PPRs, again, identifying the entry to practice competencies. And I just want to clarify with everyone that the entry to practice competencies are spread over four years. Somebody at some point said they have to have all, all 100 in one semester, and that is not the truth. And so they, you'll have them coming into you um, saying that. And no, they just have to complete what's in the, uh, on the document because it's not it's not going to be appropriate for them to complete all of them. So uh, they'll complete the so the PPRs, the professional practice records, will have the entry to practice competencies noted. And I recommend to the students that they take the, an Excel spreadsheet and put down every time they've accomplished one of those, so that they know at the end of the four years what what competencies they still need to do. That wouldn't be us for up to us to track, it's up for the students to track. And then they could say to me, you know what, I've had a patient with an MI for the last three shifts. Um, can I have a patient with congestive heart failure? So that they get the experience so that they can actually uh, accomplish the competencies that they need to. Um, and with the professional practice, there's also a little bit of a uh, reflection in there as well. However, as I said, we're gonna be going to a different document next year um, we're going to redo this document and, and always welcome for for feedback from our clinical instructors as well so um, our orientation is very interesting i'm going to share my screen here if I, uh, the the here we go where did i lose it now it's here just a moment ago Uh, found it. So uh, the orientation is very interactive, and so um, being um, that people learn, I'm, I'm really opposed to PowerPoints, and, but I have to use them. I know that, but I really find that PowerPoints are lazy learners, lazy teachers. And so I really try to have much more interactivity and again, welcoming any feedback uh, from, the, from the clinical instructors. So we do really a more of an interactive session in small groups. Students feel more comfortable in small groups, they're more likely to ask questions when they're in small groups. So it, um, we have no rooms on campus, so we always have to go to the hotel. And so the hotel we're going to is the Best Western. And it's really way down near the bus station. Does everyone know where the bus station is? Um, oh, I don't even know the name of the street. It's uh, between Victoria and Park. Like, Park. Yeah. So, at, it's, but it's it's yeah, it's not Bond Street. But what is it? It's way down near the, the Oshawa bus station. I can send you the address. Um, and so we're at that whole. Pardon me? Park Road. Park Road. That's it. Okay. So that is, it's on Park Road. And so we're at the Best Western, just because we have no room on campus. We will be in the, the opposite room to where we were, Yvonne. Uh, Fabi needs our room for video, uh, audio stuff. So we don't need that. So we're going to go to the other room. And um, 
and I'll bring all the equipment that we'll require. So really all you need to do is walk on. Um, I'll start with the introductions and what we do is any questions, fear and concerns, we just bring post-it notes and students are encouraged to write down what are you afraid of and sometimes they're afraid of walking in and finding somebody dead, sometimes they're afraid of uh, um, sleeping in, sometimes they're afraid of a patient not liking them and so whatever they are we sort of theme them and at intervals throughout the morning we'll stop and address their, their questions and, and fears and concerns so that that and we talk to them about making sure they eat breakfast, making sure that they have a buddy system, making sure that they're um, traveling safely to clinical. Um, so we have the different stations. They rotate about every 45 minutes. And so we do a CPR station, which Angie will do. We have the torsos and so the so they'll do like the regular CPR BLS kind of scenarios and just do a quick practice of that inserting an oral airway and bag valve masking. Uh, Maria does the clinical scenarios so these are about, about 10 scenarios that are what do you do if so what do you do if a patient desatur you, you go in and you find a patient that's desaturated what do you do if a patient falls on the floor what do you do if somebody experiences chest pain? Um, what do you do if, and so those are the types of scenarios, and they just have a good discussion to allay any of their fears. Uh, we do have a break schedule, but there's really no um, coffee services there. So I'll just encourage everyone to bring their own refreshments because there really isn't anything. Um, can everybody see my document, by the way? Oh, good. Okay. So uh, then Jen does that sort of the, an overview of the uh, requirements, the, the written requirements. So the learning plan, she'll talk to them about how to formulate their learning goals. She'll talk to them about their strategies and making sure they have timelines. It's, it's, and, and next year, just so that when you're with us again next year, we will be going to the CNO template. So because everybody's familiar with that, we'll just go to that one. And there's all the instruction right on there. But this is uh, the last time we'll use this. The reflective, reflective critical analysis, so that's that, it's a five or seven page document with three or more references and it's quite labor intensive. So that's why we're trying to cut down on their, their you know, busy work. And then the PPR, she goes through all of that in individual groups and that when the groups they can ask their questions. Then we do a documentation station, and that is one of the things I really want to focus on this semester is that we need to beef up the, the documentation in our program. It's not, not just in year two, but I don't think we do a, um, a good enough job in teaching them how to document and to doc, use the electronic documentation and technology. And also, uh, when we found out that Lake Ridge went to uh, downtime procedures with, uh, with the recent um, Oh, when it was what, what happened they were held hostage when I forget the technical term but they were held hostage that all the hospitals in the UK and Lake Ridge of all hospitals they were all they they hacked into their systems and my colleague in the UK said they couldn't even visit people in their homes because they didn't have addresses for them so they're waiting for their morning insulin and there's nobody coming it was very awful. So our students do not know how to go to downtime rec, uh, down, downtime charting. And so I really want people to be familiar with uh, downtime procedures. So, and I teach them that with the med select as well. Um, so, and Yvonne, you're gonna do the documentation because you're the most familiar with Lake Ridge's documentation. Are you okay with that? Is that, is that okay with you? That's okay. okay. Great, and so um, I will bring the hard copies of it, and you can just go through some of the, the common screens and, and that sort of thing. Um, Lake, I think that that the Pickering site is now electronic as well, so we don't have to worry about doing narrative charting, but more just uh, downtime procedures and, and some of the nuances in the system at, at Lake Ridge. Then we'll have lunch. Um, and then we'll go, and then the final station will be a practicum handbook. So these, all of these stations will run concurrently. So you'll repeat your station five times. Um, and so the practicum handbook, now did I give that, I, 
I don't think I gave that to you, Sarah, but I'm going to ask no. you, if you don't mind it, I had you as our, as our float, but unfortunately we've had so many shifts. I'm going to ask you if you don't mind taking the practicum handbook station. Yeah, and, that's fine. And so I'll send it to you. It's on the website. So basically what the students do is they play a Jeopardy game. I have it all printed out. All they do is lay it out and then they can work in teams or individually and they can just go through it. Uh, at one time we had them in teams and Oh my gosh, they would like burn up to the, get the Jeopardy question, come back, they discuss it, they find a thing. It was really fast and furious. And I, I've noticed the last couple of times it's a little bit more relaxed, but it covers the high points in the practice handbook. So professional dress, what to do if you're, if you're sick, how to report an incident, that sort of thing. So that's how we do the review of the practice handbook. I provide you with the answer sheet, so don't worry about that. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm going to do interprofessional communication. I have have taken, a, I'm a master team step trainer. And so for the, you may not know what that is. And so um, in the, in the States and, and sort of a spinoff in Canada, there's this team steps and team steps is really all about patient safety. And um, it's really a way of, of it's come out of the, the, the um, I want to say the army, but what's the, the, Military is the word I'm looking for. It's come out of the U.S. military in ways of communicate so that everybody knows what you're talking about. Uh, talks about ways to prevent an incident. So they talk about different formats of how to communicate. So one of the things is the the cuss format. So you know people are talking. They're afraid something's going to happen, so you just go up and you cuss them. So meaning that you identify that you're concerned, that this is really an infringement on patient safety, and they need to do something. So it gives them format on how to speak to people. It, SBAR falls under the interprofessional communication. So I'm going to do a short PowerPoint. And you know how much I like PowerPoints. But because of the training, I have to stick right to the script. So I'll do a quick break, a quick piece in there. And one thing I forgot is that I have to fit in the math test in here somewhere. So we'll do the math test uh, at some point. The, it's the pre-practicum math test. And, and so maybe we can do that after the station, the last station. And then while I'm doing the interprofessional communication, um, the clinical instructors can actually mark the math test. And of course, I'll give you the, the key for that. Um, and then in any remaining time, we're going to, you'll get to, you can meet your, with your group. You're going to discuss uh, clinical expectations. So really the overarching theme is that the, the student is able to manage two patients, care of uh, both patients, including medications and dressings. Um, so you can really talk about how, what your particular feelings of our expectations are and, and keeping it really based on the on the handbook so for instance I know uh, Maria who I thought would join us today she can she said the students have to come looking presentable and I, I mean we can't of course they have to look presentable and looking professional she said they have their navy blue uniforms all shoved in their backpack and they pull it out and they look like they've just been sleeping in it so she clears that you know lays that out that you, well we don't expect you to have the the, the pants seem all ironed up. We expect you to look professional. Post conferences, again, post conferences at this level are was really just to um, facilitate a debriefing. Uh, and if you need some uh, instruction on how to do that sort of a piece of debriefing, and I, I'm going to ask you what method you use. And so if you can't identify what method you use for debriefing, let me know and we'll certainly talk about it. And debriefing for simulation is the same as debriefing for clinical. And you want to have a, a format that you might use to help the students um, understand and peel away some of those layers of that experience to help them put it into context. Um, sometimes it's just about you, you don't have time, especially when you're giving medications. You might just say, how did your day go? And, and just get it feedback from a few, few people. Um, you could during your post conferences, and sometimes I would try and get the dietitian, the physiotherapist, um, whatever the area, maybe the, the advanced practice nurse, uh, get somebody there to do a 20 minute talk, not too long, but just to really give give them uh, a little overview of the role or help them understand. I had physiotherapists come so that they knew how to do chest physio or deep breathing, coughing, anything that's going to support their their knowledge. Uh, the one thing we just we do not do is any additional work 
during post conferences. So um, there was a time when, you know, they would do a little mini presentation on lab values or a little mini presentation on vac dressing. We don't get them to do that. They have enough assignments. So that post conference is really, uh, a, you know, time for them to debrief with you. Or again, if you don't have time, you might even want to do um, a couple things. Because the afternoons were so crazy that I might, I would do a morning um, conference and so I would do get everybody got, got their work done and then maybe 11 o'clock we would do a mid-morning and they would just present their patient just tell me who your patient is or um, let's do our, our like almost like a pre-conference sometimes I would even bring them before clinical because sometimes that report report was always a moving target I'm used to report being at 7 30 it, at 7 30 you exchanged information um on some of those units that i was clinical instructor on report would start at 6 30 and as people came in they get reported off and that would go till 7 30. so if report was later then we would able we've got you know 20 minute pre-conference in and so how have you prepared uh, please feel free to ask the students how they prepared for clinical uh i believe that not preparing for clinical is akin to negligence However, if they are if they're preparing for my lecture by reviewing a chapter in the book, or I'm preparing for my my COPD um, case study, or however, that's still prep. That's clinical prep. But for them to say I didn't prepare at all, uh, that would be a concern to me. And and if they weren't prepared, then um, you could feel free to send them to the library and do more research or more prep if they needed to. Um, parking. So again, we have no special rates, no student rates. It's just the regular parking in the garage. The phone chain is really important. So you get them to that phone chain that you um, have all their telephone numbers. And so you would call the, the next person to say, we're canceling, there's bad weather, it's not safe to drive, so I'm gonna cancel. Then they're gonna call uh, the next person on the chain then, and everybody calls them. And then the final, the final person calls you back so that you know that everybody's been notified. So we do a phone chain, um, submission of the documents. So we have a coordinated date of when everything will be due because the students all talk. Oh, how come I have to hand in mine and they don't have to hand in theirs? Uh, worksheets that we have on the, as soon as the, the um, everybody gets associated, attached to the, the Blackboard, we do have their worksheets on there as a whole orientation file and they've got worksheets. And so students are expected to go, come to, orientation with worksheets, but also to go to clinical with worksheets. Uh, practicum evaluations, I'm not sure if Kathy's gone through them. There's a midterm and a final evaluation. So at the midterm, so about week two or even three, because week two is too early, but the student has to prepare it and send it in to you, and you um, add to it. And I always tell the students they need to add as much as they can in, because if, if there's a problem, so later on, if there's a problem, and so let's say they get to year three and they say, this student got passed and does not know how to do an assessment. Then we go back to that evaluation and it says, well, yeah, uh, Sarah said that this, they did a thorough assessment of a health assessment. So it's a one-off. This They know how they've been signed off already. It doesn't mean they're going to be remain competent forever, but at least they were checked off. But if it says, continue to work on your health assessment and in year three, they're still failing, or flailing, then we we have a different issues. So they do a self assessment, and then you add that as well. And they're to add in all of their comments. Uh, typically, I would add in. Um, it's broken down into the seven main competencies, the seven main overarching themes: um, professionalism, knowledge, knowledge application, ethics, service. And so you want to make sure you have comments in each one of those categories. Um, you want to make sure that they that they have a handover that you give a they give a good concise handover report so they can't wander around their sheet. so typically what I would say to the student is if there's any red alerts and they know the red alerts if there's any red alerts come and get me right away so that means a blood pressure less than 100 on 60 that or greater than 140 on you know 90 because they don't know the contextual features but I want to know any red alerts, any heart rate greater than 100, less than 60. Well, the patient's heart rate's 55 and they're on a beta blocker. I'll make that decision, but they can't. So you want to make sure that they uh, will contact you early. And if the patient's unstable, please emphasize with them, stay with the patient. 
um, call me, but stay with the patient. But what I'm really trying to help them to learn is to be succinct in their reporting. So they don't just wander around the, the lab. They would actually give a formal report. So I would get them to just give me a brief report in the morning, vital signs are stable, blah, blah, blah. Then at the end of my shift, I, they gave me a formal handover report um, in, in either like a, in a systems-based format or, you know, could be SBAR, however you, whatever that unit does, but making sure that it's, they're becoming succinct in their communication. Uh, you could also talk about common diagnoses so that they can get familiar with what surgical procedures or what, you know, common diagnoses, labs and diagnostics, the pa patient teaching. I'm always shocked at how they uh, come across as being quite authoritative on their topic. And I'll say, well, where did you learn that? Um, you know, that, that uh, I'm just trying to think of some of these old wives tales that I've heard. Um, well, my mother told me, well, no, it has to be evidence-based and you can't, you have to teach according to what the guidelines are. So um, really integrating other coursework as well, patho and pharmacology. And so that's, and then there is, if there was time, they could start, uh, there's case studies in the back of these uh, uh, student handouts and I'll give, I'll, I'll send them to you as well so that you're aware of them. And so there's medical case studies and surgical case studies and they can always start their learning plans as well. Uh, so it's a pretty full day, that first orientation day. Uh, the second orientation day is our simulation-based learning, and I just want to uh, rem remind everyone that uh, simulation is a safe place to learn. That we want to build their confidence, and so and and also we want them to experience it as opposed to us just telling them. They are novices, so we have to guide them. Um, and so I always start my my simulations by at every time going through the learning objectives because that's what drives the scenario is the learning objectives. So there's different stations here, and so they, they have, uh, so basically they're going to uh, go through a bunch of stations. Uh, and so on day two, I'm going to break everyone into two groups. I'm going to ask, if you, if you folks don't mind arriving, say, half an hour early, so on, on Tuesday, if you could, we start at what time, 8 o'clock, if you want to come in around 7.30. Now, we don't get into the lab until 9 o'clock, so come on over around 8.30, but just give yourself time if you're unfamiliar with the surroundings or you need to know where you're going, because you don't want to arrive. And, um, and so I'll divide the, the groups in two, and half the group will show up with a, a simulation. The other half will, will go to the dining room. Because we can't have more than 35 people in the lab because of bad air, uh, we have to have people separated out. So we're going to have half the people in, and it's the same case scenario for each of our simulators. It's called an unfolding scenario. And so they get report, and then they're going to work through the details. So, Sarah, you're going to be doing the health assessment station. And okay. so you're going to have uh, – and I'll, I'll show you the – the, the, the scenario. So basically, you're just going to um, encourage them. You're going to have them re review their learning objectives. You're going to give them report, or they're going to read report on the card, and then they're going to do their assessment. And you're going to find. I've asked that they have crackles. That the simulator has crackles, so they can identify the patient as course crackles. And ideally, that they would come back to you and report that I'm hearing some course crackles. But and you might have to really guide them that that about the assessments. And, and just some tip, tips mm -hmm. and tricks. The simulators are limited because you can't hear posterior breath sounds. So you're going to really have to coach them on posterior breath sounds and really landmarking. I find people do a very poor job. Even my bridgers do a very poor job at posterior assessment. So making sure that they know where the bases of the lungs are uh, because otherwise they're listening over the liver. <laughs> Decreased breath sounds. Yeah, that's because it's the liver. So really knowing your uh, assessments, uh, where the, the landmarks are for cardiorespiratory assessments, um, knowing that they have to check skin temperature with the backs of their hands, that they, and they know this. And I think, I, did I send you the uh, health assessment critique? I think so, yeah. Because that's what that sort of is the outline of, of how they're doing their assessment, just to give you an idea. Now, that, they're not being critiqued today. It's just to help refresh even how to get a stethoscope in their hand and really where do you feel for pulses, um, all of those sorts of things. Uh, and just to really help them build their confidence again. 
Uh, Maria is going to do sterile sepsis, and that sterile sepsis will be, um, uh, I've asked that they have a Foley catheter and a sterile dressing. And so they, this, the, and, and they have about four of these out. So if you have a group that's not, that people are busy, then they can go and, and uh, do that as well. Now, there will be med carts out as well. So if, so typically I would break them into, so two people are going to do an assessment and there's two mannequins set up. So you're going to have both Mr. Dress Up and Mrs. Mitchell or whatever. So you have two, so you have two simulators. You can have two on each and then the other people can actually go to the meds and start practicing giving medications to, to start them thinking about all of the stuff they have to do for clinical. Um, and so the same for all the stations, there'll be two mannequins per station. Maria will do sterile sepsis, and in report, it's going to say the patient just received Lasix, and they've done a, a post, uh, they've done a scan, and there's about 800, the patient needs urgent catheterization. So they have to do an urgent catheterization or an urgent dressing. Uh, but it, they'll, one station will be still focusing on sterile sepsis. The other station Jennifer does is around prioritization, and so there's also... I uh, forget which station, I think it's the station, there is a stump they have to uh, redress. Uh, the, the, the stuff that's going on in all these stations is all testable material as well. So we have to make sure that we do cover it. And so, oh, that's, oh, sure, that's, that's fine, Jennifer. Um, Jennifer, I, I, just before you go, are you, what's your background? Are, are you, are you med surge? What? Pardon? You hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, you can. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, I'm maternal newborn. Okay. So, um, but you will you be familiar with latex drains and and that sort of thing? Where I practice, we don't have a whole lot of them. Occasionally, we do, but. Because Catherine's been switched uh, out of our group, and so I'm gonna, um, I'm actually gonna give you her station, which is miscellaneous, and it goes over the drains, NG feeds, chest tube therapy, all of those sorts of things. So I'm, at, but I've been placed. I'm not with uh, Med Surge anymore. I have a group going to, um, to a maternal newborn floor. Oh, so you're not even in the year two team anymore with us. With the, I'm supposed to be with the year twos who are going to Lake Ridge on the metal, on the maternal newborn unit. Ah, okay, that sounds great. Then don't you worry. You're not even going to be doing an assignment then. Okay. You just, you just, you just need med select training. That's right. Oh, I am so sorry about that. I will make sure that you have your med select training. Don't you worry. You sign right off and get ready for work. Well, thank you sorry so much. About that. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Bye now. So, um, uh, so prioritization will be dressing, uh, uh, there's a patient with a stump and they have to do stump bandaging because again, all this stuff is all testable material. I can't fit everything into, plus the fact they're not, this is not fun and games. This is serious business. And so this is why uh, we do this. So, and there's a prioritization. This patient has a blood pressure of blah, 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 because RM practice is all around prioritization. And so where do they actually learn it? So this is the opportunity for them to learn it. Um, we break for lunch and then we switch. So they do all three stations in one room, and then they do the other three stations. In the other room, Vaughn, you'll continue on with the case studies if you don't mind, you're familiar with that. Uh, again, there are pre and post-op case studies talking about pain management, um, talking about positioning, deep breathing, coughing, some of those really important things, some of the complications that they could be looking for. And she's going to do... Um, IV therapy because they, they've had it in year one, but they're still a bit rusty. And so she talks about um, all the different solutions, isotonic, um, isotonic uh, solutions, uh, hypertonic, hypotonic. She talks about DCing a saline lock and flushing a saline lock. So she does all, like, all the IV stuff. And then we have a final station, as you heard me mentioning to um, – uh, poor Jen, poor Jen, uh, I thought that she's probably thinking, what do I have to do that for? Um, she's going to, uh, so we'll have our, I don't know, somebody will be doing the miscellaneous station, which includes drains, chest tubes, um, uh, NG feeds, any of those things, brain and skin scale, uh, all of the falls, risk assessment. Do you both do falls risk assessment with your, at your hospitals? Yes, we do. How often do you do it, Yvonne? Oh, 
Oh, I did. so again, and there is an emerge, so she wouldn't see it that often. But I know at Markham Stillwell, they do it in the ICU every day, uh, falls risk, and, and also the Braden they do. And so again, some of these skin scales that are scores that they might not see, you know, that they need to be familiar when they chart. Um, if there's anything else that you think we need to put in the miscellaneous station, just let me know. Uh, and we'll do that. And so that's the, that is the day, the, the, the second day of orientation. Here's the patient. So I think I've sent these to you already. This is the patient and, um, and how the simulators will be programmed. Um, and, and, and I never know if Mrs. Dress Up is going to be a Mrs. or a Mr. But anyways, I bring all the documentation for this so that all you do is facilitate the station. I uh, typically would, I, so I start out by reading the learning objectives at each of the stations. They work through it. Then we do a debrief at the end. The debriefing, oh, I better order some chairs too. Um, the debriefing, uh, it's difficult because we don't have time to do a, a real formal debrief. So if you just want to do a plus delta, that's fine. So what do you think went well here? What do you think you've learned? What do you think you're going to take away from here to work on? So just really helping, helping them to put it, uh, so this is, well, it's a great day. It's good entertainment. What are you going to take away? What are you going to really do uh, going forward from here? And so, you know, just helping them to think about their learning plan and what their learning needs are. So, so that's, that's that. That's sort of our, our orientation. Um, is there any questions? Does it sound pretty straightforward? Yeah. Yeah, I think it'll be good. I'm sure I'll have questions come like Tuesday and Wednesday, but when I have them, I'll just ask. <laughs> Fire away. Fire away. Now, I rotate between the two rooms, so um, so if there's any problems, I'll just leave you my number. Just text me, and, you, and I'll... Okay figure it out that way uh what happened one time is that we were had a room booked somebody else came in and said no we've got the room booked and nobody texted me to let me know so then they packed up all the equipment and they relocated and they didn't take all the equipment with them so we lost equipment in that transfer so i want to be there to make sure we don't lose any equipment okay sounds good yeah and so the room we're going to be in is the dining room the college dining room and so if you do, you, do you know where Tim Hortons is? On the second level. Like in, we're yeah, on the college. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so where I met you, you just go straight along that corner and then you veer to the left where the stairs are. Oh. And you okay, go yeah. four stairs and then it's halfway down. Okay, so it's kind of sort of near like the criminal justice wing. Yes, you go down the criminal justice, down okay. the sort of, not straight down, but around the corner to the gym. Around the corner. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Gym. Okay. If you, if you see the gym, you've gone too far. Okay. Well, I'll figure it out. So we meet there then on the Wednesday. Yes, that's correct. Uh, you are going to okay. go to the lab, though, Sarah. You're going to be in SW207. Okay. Because you're doing So I'll just go directly there then. Yvonne will be in the dining room. Okay. Okay. Yvonne, any questions? Um, no, I just have to go find out where the dining room is. Okay, so the d d d the dining room is. D do you know, you don't know where the Tim Hortons is? Um, do you know where the information desk is? Where the college and the university meet? Um, I will go to the college on Sunday and find lo and locate the room. Okay, okay, all right. That and, and we'll be in that room, uh, G twenty twenty one. Um. I think that's all I have to say. Uh, we'll just link up. So just my my request is that you just sort of thread through when we're doing cardiac, really, you know, maybe get them to focus more on the cardiac because they've got the theoretical knowledge, so now they can just apply it. Um, so keeping, you know, what did you learn in class today? Let's apply it. And then I do the same thing. What did you learn in clinical? So let's talk about it and tell me how you made out. Who's giving medications? Um, so, and, uh, you know, how, and don't feel, we have to be able to give the students the opportunity to give medications enough times to be consistent so that they consistently manage two patients with medications. Um, so what we would do is, and not the first week. So the first week we go to, you're going to orientate them. So we have uh, uh, day one will be group 
A and then group day two will be group B the following week, go out to clinical. Then they're going to go out. So the first day they're on the unit, you may or may not, you may have some people that are real. You think, okay, they can give meds uh, by the end of the month, like January. If you think of the dates, they might be, they might be okay to give out meds. They, they may not. And so if you give them out, so typically you might have the half giving out the meds one day, half giving out the second day. So that you have, but they have to give them at least four or five times. So they have that opportunity to say, yes, I've given it. And sometimes I know when I did it, it was a challenge because you might have half the, the students in the unit. I mean, you have the patients in the unit. I'd have 16 patients and giving medications for at least eight of them. It was crazy. Um, so we're responsible for patient safety. We don't give any of the patients medications. We're not um, uh, authorized to the, we, the patient, the students are. And so we want, we give the uh, medications to, that students can give the medications. I would watch everything they poured. Um, I'm being very careful, especially at the beginning of the semester. Towards the end of the semester, I could sometimes watch, depending on who they were, some students I couldn't, but if I, I sometimes can watch two students drawing up their medications at the same time, that, so that you could do other things. Sometimes it was just medications I did all day long. Suzanne Dub was great with me because sometimes the students didn't give out the medications. It was a little bit delayed because you're trying to get to everybody. And so, and I even said to Suzanne, I said, okay, um, I know we gave out our, you know, Metropolis daily. We gave it out a little bit late. And so uh, I said, I'll be glad to fill the minister report. And she said, no, don't worry about it. So um, being patient safety is always what drives it, but also students are learning. So um, I keep that in mind as well. Um, I would not I would never sort of go back, take all these things and then say to the staff nurse, I don't have time, you have to do it now. I would make sure we did everything because the staff, you have to be aware and you both are staff nurse, so you know how much work they have. And for them to mm -hmm. think that all of this work is going to be done, that you're going to do the medications and then all of a sudden, no, you're going to have to do all the medications. That I don't think is really, that's not a good situation for them. It's not good for relationships. So I would, if I said I was going to do something, I would make sure we did it. Um, so as long as they have time to give out the medications, which reminds me, the med select system, the way it works is that you go to the online module and I've been trying like crazy to get the link to it, but I can't. Now, two things that there is, it is on the wave at the hospital. So the next time you're at the hospital, you could actually do it there. I just need a printout because it's quite a laborious process and I have to demonstrate that we've adhered to the process. So we have that once you've completed and it's only probably going to take you 30 minutes, complete it, print out that final sheet, because I need to keep that as evidence to say that, yes, all these people have done it. And then I go down and I do a hands-on with you in the med room, in the training room downstairs. Typically, I come when you're on shift so that we can, so that you don't have to make an extra trip in there and stuff like that. So, you know, don't worry about that. We'll get to it, Sarah. You okay, know, no worries. And don't let it go because sometimes it, you know, can, it can get pushed down the track. And if I say, oh, my goodness, you remind me, I have to give medications this week, so I need to get it. You know, so just don't yeah, put, yeah, put yeah. some pressure on me because I, just, I have all the uh, year fours to train as well. And we, yeah. and we have to get them out. And, and then I have all the year three clinical instructors and year two clinical instructors. And there was a bit of a confusion last year because I said to the last, I said to the, um, uh, coordinator said, you know, who, who needs training? Give me a list. I knew all you folks needed it. So I took it. I had the med surge team. I didn't get anybody from Matt Child. And then in the end, there was people from Matt Child that needed training. So the students had problems with giving meds. So I want to avoid any of those issues. Uh, now, for, uh, for you, Yvonne, you are um, staff there. But I think I still scan you in as a clinical instructor. Pardon? Last year? Yes. I was, I was able to access the med select on Tuesday. Okay. Now, uh, but what I'll do is I'm going to um, put you in on my database as well, just because we want it here to process. And so I'm going to, I'm going to scan you in as if you were a clinical instructor. And uh, are you only going to the one unit to C6? Okay, so that's great. So um, for other people, if you're a staff, typically you would have to have a different ID for clinical instruction, although I'm not sure how that piece is, it's, it's kind of, they keep the same number for the students all the time. 
um, I've got a different um, ID for my mint collect. I can't use my staff bag. Okay, good. Yeah, so then I have to just scan you in under your clinical instructor badge, and you go in on my database. Yeah. And I send that to Josie. I'm going to say to, that I've trained Sarah. She's done the med select and scan you in. But from this point forward, I just come up on a Tuesday or Wednesday when you're in clinical. I grab your badge. I scan you in. You don't even need to do this again. Once it's done, I just we scan you in because I, I can only put you in um, for the for the semester because then your access would finish as a clinical okay. instructor. So, but then from this point forward, you just get scanned in. It's no big deal. Oh, okay, no problem. Yeah. Is there any other questions? I think I'm good for now. I think I've got most of them answered, so that's good. Well, that's great. And maybe we could just do a touch base in a month's time if this Zoom platform yeah. works for everybody, because I, I love it. So now I'm going to actually archive it for anybody else who might need to um, listen mm -hmm. to it. And so uh, we'll do the Zoom platform again rather than you coming to campus. Yeah, oh, works for me. This well, is perfect. Listen, don't ever hesitate. Please let me know how I can support you. Um, I'm only too pleased. I'm not sure if you've got, did you get um, an electronic book, the textbook that we're using? Sarah, I don't, Vaughn, did you get it last semester? No, I didn't. So, so let's get you set up with um, electronic um, books. We don't bring in desk copies anymore because of the expense of that. But what we do oh, yeah. is get you access to the electronic books that the students have. Oh, okay. That's and perfect. So, so if, if you could just remind me, Sarah, just fire me off an email and I will uh, get that. Uh, I'll get the, the book rep to get you in onto that system. Okay, perfect. All right, then. Well, listen, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I'm looking forward to our next semester, and uh, I think it's going to be it's gonna be great. Uh, we have such wonderful students. They are so eager to learn, and they are very appreciative of your time and all your efforts. All right, everyone. Have a great weekend. Thank you so much. Thanks. You too, Leslie. Take care. Bye. Bye.